Hi guys, Haley and Steve here from Top Guns in Terre Haute, Indiana, and I'm here again today to talk with Steve and ask him a little bit about, you know, what criteria is important when we're looking for a holster to carry a gun or a firearm with us on every occasion and what makes it durable and comfortable. When I'm looking for a holster, there's a few things that, there's a few criteria that are very important to me. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean it's the same for everybody out there in right. viewer land, so I'm sure we'll get some good feedback from them as well. Right. And they're going to tell me all the reasons I'm wrong. Uh, so when I look for a holster, uh, we'll start off with the most basic. And that is, depending on when and how and where I'm carrying it, if it can protect my firearm from sweat, this is absolutely the smallest piece that, uh, at the very end. But I'll start off with it because it's almost irrelevant. If it can protect my firearm from sweat, it's probably not a bad thing, sure. right? But, but, but they certainly do not base a holster on that. Okay. Let's talk about the criteria that are absolute must for me. Um, I tend to carry more often than not an inside the waistband, but that uh, doesn't mean that some of these criteria don't cross right. over into an outside the waistband as well. Right. When I'm buying an inside the waistband, some of the criteria that I look for is number one, it has to secure the firearm, meaning if I am running or active or I get in a physical confrontation, whatever it is, I cannot risk this firearm falling out um, and someone else getting a hold of it, God forbid a child or, or maybe even a, a person with ill intentions. Right. Second is it has to not only secure it, but it also has to completely cover and protect the trigger and trigger guard. Mm -hmm. So soft holsters as a result don't necessarily fit that criteria for me because often uh, a soft holster, whether it's a nylon, sometimes even some of those thinner leathers, they can wear, and I've seen them, to where something can get in there and eventually pull that trigger. So. It's very important to me that we have that trigger protected at all times, especially for those of us, if we choose not to carry a firearm that has a manual safety, we need to make sure that you know that, that holster, in, in essence, becomes part of our safety at that point. Uh, number three on my list, and, and this is a must, I have to be able to reholster one-handed. Now, some people out there are probably gonna wonder why that's necessary. So if you're in a scenario where you had your firearm out, Sure. and it's no longer warranted. I need to be able to put this firearm back into my holster, but I don't necessarily, maybe this, maybe whatever the situation was is not completely over. I don't want to take my eyes off of what could still be a threat. I don't want to tie up both hands and I don't want to be doing something of this nature. So I want to be able to still focus and maybe perhaps even blade out so that I can have my firearm as far away as possible so that I can reholster. Still keep this as, as a means of, of slowing someone down if they were to, to rush me at that point. But, um, but and, and, main, and most importantly is maintaining that eye contact. Sure. The last criteria that I'm looking for when I purchase a holster would be the ability to put the holster and the gun, so the whole package, on my body in less than two seconds. So the reason for that is, if you're getting up in the middle of the night and you have to rush out the door or you've heard something in your house, what I wouldn't want to have happen is I'm grabbing just the gun. Right. For the same reasons that we just said in the prior, uh, if I have this firearm in my hand and it's no longer warranted, the last thing I want to do is tuck it in my pants. Right? Because if it does get physical, then this thing could be falling out, could falling, falling down my pant leg, going out of my waistband. Um, we want to make sure that it's secured. Also, you may just need to secure it for other reasons. Maybe the scenario, in this particular scenario, maybe law enforcement showed up. You don't want to be the person holding a gun mm -hmm. and then look and see you as being the potential threat. Absolutely. So, so we want to make sure we have the ability to properly secure that thing at all times. And so having that ability uh, means, you know, if, if, if it takes, it's like putting on a pair of slip-on shoes on the way out the door versus having to tie them. If you're in a hurry, you may not waste the time putting on a pair of shoes that you have to tie. So we want to make sure that same thing with that holster is that we do have the ability to fully deploy that firearm and holster into our waistband all within, in my opinion, less than two seconds and quite frankly, even less than that and should be able to do it on the move. So I noticed when I was shopping for a holster, there are so many different materials. So nylon, there's spandex, there's leather, there's kydex. What is it that I need to look for when it comes to buying and choosing the best holster? All right, so 
buying the best holster is gonna be subjective, right? Sure. Your needs may be a little bit different than my needs may be different than their needs. Uh, I personally have moved towards Kydex for a few reasons. First and foremost, it meets all the criteria that I just mentioned. Uh, now, some people, maybe they're carrying a fancy 1911 and they want a good looking holster to go on the outside of their waistband and or a revolver or something. And so some people, quite frankly, wear holsters almost as a fashion statement mm -hmm. and, and, and there's nothing wrong with it if right. that's what they're looking for. Absolutely. Personally, I'm always concealed. I don't really care what my holster looks like and the comfort um, is second only to all the criteria that I mentioned. Right. So, so once I meet my other criteria, I'm now looking for comfort. Kydex, uh, while I have worn a few holsters that are slightly more comfortable than Kydex, Kydex happens to be one of the more durable materials. It happens to be uh, where they're form fitted, so they're very well made, specifically to your gun, assuming you go to a quality manufacturer. I won't do the shameless plug for the ones that we carry here in the store, but we obviously do have those here in the shop as well. And they are nice ones too, in case you're curious. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, so when I'm looking for a holster, I'm probably going to go with the Kydex, but, but I certainly don't want to take away from the fact that other people out there are gonna have other criteria that they're looking for. So building off of that, when I'm looking for a type of attachment, so for my, for my holster, it's an in the waistband holster and it has an ulti clip and a delta wing. But I've noticed that there are certain ones that go only over the belt, but I don't wear a belt all the time. So what does that look like? Great question, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, she used some fancy words there. So, uh, so these are different attachments that allow us to, to kind of decide whether or not, or how we're going to affix them to our body. When I'm talking about carrying a holster, you know, one of the things I do always recommend for anyone, along with a good quality holster, is a very good quality belt. We do have, we can make a whole nother video on that, but we have some very high quality belts that we recommend. Um, we do also get a lot of females in here that say, look, I don't wear a, a belt every day, or, or in fact, I don't even have belt loops. And so, first and foremost, then now what comes into play is, is your pant strong enough is the elastic or whatever it's made out of is it strong enough to support the weight so even if we have this thing perfectly secure in there right. if the spandex or whatever we're dealing with the material that we're dealing with here is it strong enough to hold this thing from from kind of flipping out a little bit then that's going to be an issue a for security purposes Absolutely. but also just for printing because it's it's not going to hold it nice and tight to your body and I know you expressed some concern there about printing yeah. once before. Yes, absolutely. So having a very secure system in place, my preference is a belt, but if a belt is not an option for you, then you might look at the Ulti Clip um, and you can Google that or maybe Basil will put one up on the screen for him. Um, but, but there are certainly lots of different attachments and we'll see if we can get a few on the screen for them to take a look at to see what type of attachments I always do prefer a belt first and foremost though. The, the, when we're talking about um, the wings that you can put on these holsters, so what that's doing, that, that's not necessarily just for security, although I can see where, or, or retention, I can see where maybe because it's putting pressure on the inside of the waistband and then you have this on the outside of the waistband, maybe that creates a little more friction there, but the real purpose of that is it takes, uh, it helps hide printing and so, the, the purpose there is it's pushing, it's pushing that way, which now pushes the butt of your gun inward so that it's not printing as much. And so it puts it up against, against your side a little better. Certainly those are options as well. Absolutely, and I've noticed that with the Delta Wing, because I have a holster that doesn't have them, but having a smaller frame, it does kind of position things a little bit differently. So when the Delta Wing pushes up against my pants, it does push a little bit more into like when I appendix carry, for example, it pushes it a little more in and I don't see it when I'm printing, or Absolutely. I don't see the printing as much. Absolutely. Yeah. Naturally, most of us, uh, and we'll, a whole nother video once again, but, but, but concealing, uh, for those of us that live in a state where it's legal to conceal in, uh, I would tell you that, that concealment is, is probably one of the best assets you can have on your side because you want to maintain that element of surprise in a self-defense situation. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, I appreciate Steve's help once more, but I'm curious to know, what is it that you guys think that he missed? Um, what's important to you? Or maybe some things that you disagree with. So let us know and maybe we can address those on the next time that we meet. All right, and they need to do, what is it like the like, the share, yeah. the like, subscribe? Share. Down in the corner. Bell. Bell. 
I don't hit know the little bell and, and then you <laughs> and then you'll uh, get notifications for when we uh, do our videos. Yes. So thanks as always, guys. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care.